Why is money going into exchange traded funds instead of, say, mutual funds, where for years that's where it was going? This is Trillion's ETF Master Chef, where we interview the chefs of the finance world on their hottest investment recipes. Welcome to Trillions. I'm Joel Weber. And I'm Eric Balchunas. Eric, one of the things we talk about on the podcast is how the ETF exchange traded fund universe is really two different worlds. You've got cheap stuff and other more expensive stuff, right? Yeah, it's really barbelling. And we see this because portfolios are barbelling. And ETFs take in about $4 billion a day. So you have all this money going to cheap, vanilla, general uh, equity or bond exposure. That would be the core of your portfolio, say 80%. And everybody can get that now for almost free. But that's pretty boring. <laughs> so people like to add on and have a little fun, try to get a little alpha, do a little better. And so they use maybe 20% for the more shiny objects, as we call them, or hot sauce to put on the portfolio. And that's what we're seeing in the flows. Why are we seeing so many different hot sauces as ETFs? Wherever money goes or in Wall Street, you're gonna find product that's <laughs> gonna follow it. So right now, that lane is gonna take in about $130 billion a year. That's a good amount of money, so you see a lot of innovation happening. A lot of people who might have been a around the industry for a while are now repackaging themselves in ETFs. They're thinking of new themes, ESG, that's environmental social governance. There's all kinds of ways to tweak and do something different, and ETFs are the structure of choice to do that. So how are investors supposed to use those two tools? Typically, what they do is they put the 80% in the boring vanilla. So then the other 20%, they'll, again, they'll use some, some stuff that's a little more jumpy, things that they can speculate on, sort of, you know, some call it their play money. And the behavioral hack here is that by focusing on that and having your fun over there, you don't touch the 80% because leaving that alone is where your real wealth grows. Why is money going into exchange traded funds instead of, say, mutual funds? It's just cheaper. Uh, it's gonna be more tax efficient. It's gonna be a little more easy to get. You can buy an ETF anytime during the day. A mutual fund only has an NAV once a day. I tend to use the metaphor of a CD and an MP3. An MP3 didn't just take one evolutionary step, it took a couple, and that's why I completely revolutionized music. I would say the ETF is similar. This doesn't mean mutual funds are dead, uh -huh. they have their purpose, but generally speaking, ETFs are sort of more of the 21st century vehicle to deliver those exposures. And what makes ETFs so powerful about You can have hot sauce with it. When we talk about this barbell portfolio, if you have 80, 70% over here, that's gonna be all in bond stocks for say five bips or 0.05%, you can spend a little more over here for the hot sauce and you put that all together, you're still at a very low fee. How is this changing investing for normies like me? At the end of the day, convenience in any business does well. And ETFs, I just think, make investing just so convenient and easy. They track what they track, and people really like having everything at their fingertips. You can basically like open the hood and know what you're gonna get, not unlike an ingredient on a label of food. Uh, you are building a portfolio. It's much like you know cooking a meal, and you have complete discretion over how you do that. Some people do it on their own, some people hire somebody for this, but you know, this is ultimately what we're doing here, and you're trying to make something that's right for you.